we go. We're on. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to call the uh, Monday, December 6, 2021, Park and Recreation Commission meeting to order. And again, I don't see any public forum who is. No. Well, so let's go to our correspondence. Um, the first one is the one from uh, Joyce Deloro, uh, Joyce. And um, that is on our agenda for later. So why don't we just sort of keep that and we'll talk about that one after. Rick, I'm not so sure what this is all about. I mean, I understand that somebody, apparently two teams at uh, Calvin Lee both thought that the fields look great, best they've seen in 24 years, but I'm not sure who wrote the letter. So Tom, Tom Carasay is the uh, ah. captain, manager, whatever of it's, it, uh, it's, I think they call themselves an over 50, but I think it's an over 60 soccer team. It's, um, over 50. it's the over 50 um, Guilford Black Eagles. Right, right. But but I know he, he's definitely over 60. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, they, they were really, really impressed with the fields and said the other team, uh, visiting team said we're very, very complimentary about the field three at Calvin Lee. So, you know, Tony knows it. I sent him a copy of that and, you know, thanked him and the guys. Good. Great. We're getting a lot of nice compliments on the field. So that's great. And then the other letter is uh, to Tara. Thank you for having her group string the lights for the Christmas tree. And I'm not sure what the group is either. So, um, yeah, it doesn't really say that. It's, it's the VIP uh, from the high school. Um, okay. I'm not sure what that stands for exactly, but it's a, a group of students. Very important people. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, uh, um, Todd, Todd knows some of the people in that group, and, or he knows the, the uh, teacher. And so yeah. he, he actually suggested it. And uh, yeah, they put 2,200 light bulbs into the strings for us. And wow. um, they, they got recognized for that at the tree lighting uh, Friday night, too, for doing that. Okay. And Great. I actually saw that posted on Facebook because a parent of one of the VIP group students was really happy that they had this opportunity to participate. So. Great. Okay. And lastly, we have a thank you from the VNA for the use of uh, the community center room at no charge for their hospice program. Yeah. And the assistance she said they received from both Jennifer Knight and Todd Rake was exceptional. So that was really, really, again, quite nice. We've got a great staff. We sure do. We do. We're very lucky. Okay, the minutes of our November 1st meeting. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from November 1st, 2021. I'll second. Any discussion, any changes, any questions? Oh. All right. All in favor of the minutes. Aye. Aye. I need this. I have. Okay. Expenditures. Any questions? Any comments? Uh, yes, I have a few questions. Okay. In the very first comment section on utilities, um, Bittner. Lights are still on. Is that the parking lot, or is that the use of the um, of the field? Uh, <clears throat> well, there's two things. One, one was the lights for it says softball, but it's also the uh, soccer lights are on the same meter, so okay. softball would have been high school. Yeah, the parking lot lights uh, definitely. Uh, you know, they are they'll be on all all winter. We okay, so sure. the November bill is for October usage. Then is that correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then Jacob's Beach, four hundred fifty nine dollars. Um, yeah, I can't believe that was just for November. I'll have to check on that one because that that's usually a lot less. Than, I, that's a good question. I, I didn't catch that one. I'll look into that. Okay, that, that, and that's a bit, do do we need the lights on at the? What time does the park ranger close the park in the winter time? Well, at well, we don't we don't have ranger anymore. We we stopped that right after Thanksgiving. So we just leave the parks open from now on. The only one we keep closed is Long Hill because you know, being an athletic field, there's no reason for anyone to go in there in the winter. Um, okay. So all the rest are kept open the rest of the year. Uh, okay. But the lights are on until the police department have asked us to leave them on 
you know, till like eight or nine or whatever, because they, they go through there and um, it's probably about eight or nine o'clock to be shut them off. I'll double check that time with Tony. Excuse me, Rick, I, I, went, I think I went, I went by Bittner Park on Thanksgiving day and the gate was locked. That was a mistake. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the range, we told him to keep Long Hill Park locked. He thought, uh, he thought we said Bittner and he, he, he got mixed up. And um, okay. so I got a call from a police sergeant uh, I think it was around 12 30, 1 o'clock, asking if there was a reason Bittner was locked. I said, well, no, it shouldn't be. And so I got a hold of the person who was supposed to open it. And they just they misunderstood. They thought we said keep that locked, not Long Hill. So anyway, we got somebody already opened it by 1 30. So, so Bittner's, Bittner's never locked, he said. From now on, it's, it's kept open. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Our, our budget for the Ranger goes from you know, early April till uh, right before Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, basically everything is left open at this point the rest of the year. We don't have a ranger opening and closing every day. Except, like I said, Long Hill. We just keep that closed because of, there's really no reason for anyone to go in there. You know, we, we do that right before Thanksgiving because we don't want, you know, maybe people come home from college or high school kids or adults or whatever and decide they want to have a, a mud bowl football game. So we kind of try to discourage yeah. that by keeping Locked up. Okay. Any okay. other questions on the expenditures? Uh, next page, page two or three. Yeah. Ground, grounds maintenance. Um, the con cans. Will these uh, numbers start disappearing in the uh, November bills? Yeah, most of them will. They had them all taken out in November, except we do leave uh, one at the basketball courts at the police station. We leave one at Bender because people are used to, you know, pick up all to keep those going all year round. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of them, uh, they all should be out I, by the end of November. I sent a, a, a list to the uh, contractor. We're going to take them all out. Um, the ones we, we have to keep are, the, are uh, um, Bidner, Basketball. Um, it's one more. I think, uh, oh, the Stump Dump. We, we pay for that one now, too. So that, that's year round. But after that, they're all, they all should be out now. Uh, it was one. I'm sorry. One at Ad, um, Adams. I think Adams. We kept one near for tennis until uh, about one more week, so mid mid, mid December. Okay, no, that's it. That ends my questions. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Can we get a motion to approve the expenditures? Motion to approve. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Just... All right, director's report. I have a question on the director's report. Okay. We're putting up the, the uh, proposed cross country trail for the Gilbert High School. What is that? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so, so Jake Jarvis, yeah, the director and the cross country coaches. They're, uh, they want a trail going around the outside of the track. Uh, this is all at the high school. Around the outside of the track, uh, behind Maturo Field, behind the home run fence of the baseball field. Um, the reason for this is I guess they've had a lot of complaints of the students running on the road, the safety issues with that. So mm -hmm. they're, they're, we're, they're asking us, basically all we're doing, we have to cut back some brush. It's not a big, big deal. I mean, it's gonna take some time. Uh, but when we do our brush cutting in the winter, that's one of the things we'll do. Have the guys go out there and, uh, and cut it. The, the, I'm a little concerned about the maintenance of it. Um, mm -hmm. Minimally concerned. I mean, we're going to have to periodically go out there and cut brush back maybe once or twice during the season. Um, but something the athletic director had asked for, the uh, team wants, you know, the, again, is to keep the kids off the road. So they're creating a, I forgot what they said the length was, maybe it's a mile and a half or something all around the school uh, fields and behind the fence there. So there's some brush behind the fence that they cut, get cut back. It's, it's not a bad idea anyway, because when that stuff starts growing into the fence, it's a problem. So it's, it's not a bad idea for us to trim it back anyway. So uh, we'll be doing that. I, th I think it's a good idea all, all in all. What I question though is, again, you know, manpower. I mean, can we do this? I mean, now we can, but we lose, we lose, you know, our part-timers, we lose people. We're never working with a full load and it's another job for our maintenance, for our 
park skies to do. I and mean, that's the only thing I'm concerned about. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a, that's a valid point, Rose. But we, you know, we wouldn't be doing it so, you know, the colder weather months anyway. When if we're not, if we're not doing snow removal, we're doing brush cutting someplace. So if we don't have a real snow, if we have a real snowy season, that that has to be a challenge. But uh, yeah. Tony met with them out there, and he thought they could do it. So. Um, Okay. Uh, I met with them. Tony, I walked it, and then he met with the uh, two coaches last week uh, and, and rewalked it. And um, you know, it's we'll, we'll get it done. Okay. I mean, that's my like again. I, I think it's a yeah. great idea. I think it's good to keep the kids off the road. I'm just concerned about how you know we keep adding work to our staff, and I'm just a little concerned about that. But. Rick, it's um. I, I realize it would, it would take a bus to get them there, but isn't there a sufficient amount of cross country trails in um, between Bittner and um, Baldwin uh, for them to run their races there? Uh, well, their course used to be at Baldwin, it's at East River Preserve now, but, that, but their race course was at Baldwin on all the trails there. They moved it to uh, East River Preserve, but that's up to them. I mean, they'd have to pay for buses and everything, but you know, if they're right there on, on the school campuses, it, again, it, it's instead of running on the roads for training, they're going to be running these loops around the school. And I was trying to keep them off the roads is what, what they want to do. Well, it doesn't seem like there's any room behind the home run fence on the, on the varsity baseball field. That drops right off into, and, and also on the um, cross country field, that drops right off into the, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the uh, basin down there where they collect uh, rainwater. Uh, is there going to, does that mean we're going to have to expand the, um, uh, the area behind the fences for them to run? It's wide enough for Tony and I walked, it's wide enough for them to get back there. Just one spot's a problem though. There's a washout, uh, oh, and about right center field, um, behind, I mean, well, behind the fence, but there's a, a, a there's kind of a gully there, um. But anyway, yeah, Tony's he's been talking with, I guess, the public works director to get in there and just put some fill in to fill that in. Uh, that's the only area that's really a problem. And once that gets filled in, I think there's plenty. It's wide enough, John. I, again, I walked it with him. I, I was okay. a runner. I mean, I think there's room to do it. Aren't they going to, you're going to have to put the gates in the fences because the fences, the perimeter fences are intact. There are no gates along any of those houses that are on uh, school side drive. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's all behind mm -hmm. the fence. They're going to come down from, the uh, stadium field, uh, you know, where the shed is there, or like where yep. the, the sack is, run down uh, on the outside fence of Maturo. They're pretty much on the outside fence all the way around. And they come around, all around the, the home run fence, then go uh, behind um, the softball field. Right. Uh, that you know, area is pretty brutal. That's pretty overgrown back there between the softball field and the um, baseball field along uh, the, the condominiums there. Was that Copper Hill or the... But those, uh, that, yeah. that area is pretty, pretty heavily vegetated. Yeah, there's just some work we have to do, but Tony, feel, you know, he feels like he can get it done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right, anything else on, anything you wanted to highlight, Rick? Any questions? Well, well just, just, just a typo, number eight, splash pad, it should be one quote, not once quote, one quote. Oh yeah, one quote, <laughs> yes. And then the, uh, just, you know, the tree lighting, I think we already talked a, lot, a little bit about it. I think it might be an Allen's report, but the Santa's workshop went great. Uh, yep. The program staff did an excellent job decorating uh, the Alexander Lounge and the Guilford Room and the, you know, the, that yep. big sled in the foyer. I mean, it, it looks very, very festive. They did an excellent job with that. Um, I, they also, I don't know if Alan, in her report, I can't remember if she talked about the, uh, the uh, 12 days. Of, yes, you know, it's in her report. Oh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll wait for her report then. But anyway, they did a great job with some of these um, things around the Christmas season to just uh, make things more festive. I would, I would say if you haven't been in the community center, go in because it's really, it's really fun. They, they had a lot of fun. I don't know if have the, uh, have the, uh, what do you call it? Have the uh, houses, the gingerbread houses gone or are they, they still there? They're still I mean, there. Yeah. And they did beautiful bulletin boards and we've had a lot of fun there. So I would yeah. say go visit if you can. All right. Um, Todd's report. Anything other than I know he told me that he's ordered the tables. Six right. months. <laughs> Six. Are they? I, I, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but are they coming from China or are they? Um, um, 
No, John, I, but I will tell you, I bought a living room uh, sofa and chair in June. And you just and got the living room? No, they called me today and said I may probably get it by uh, January 12th. Well, can't even, they can't even get the fabric to do the, the, uh, the sofa. So this is, this is the way it's going. <laughs> yeah, well, just to be clear, it's not going to take six months if we went with the lifetime tables, which is the same ones we have now. It would take six months. He found a different distributor. We're going to get them probably next week or the week after. Ah. So they're going to be a little different, but they still have a 10 year warranty like the light, the uh, lifetime tables have. Um, and uh, I think they're slightly different color, but it's either that or wait six months. So we, we know we need them. I said, go, let's go for it. Let's just do it. I don't care if they look a little different color. They're, no, they're, you know, and he, and he that they're a lot more solid than the other. Right. The, the legs yeah. are better. They're going to be more solid. So. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'll just highlight on his is the uh, the parking lot lights. Uh, uh, those are oh. on order. Three lights that are out, so it is very dark at night there. We're replacing all ten. Uh, figuring if three went out, who knows? Another month, two more might go out, but we're replacing all of them. Um, and I believe I'm pretty sure we're not paying for that out of our budget. It's coming out of a uh, energy savings account that uh, they have in the finance office. So um, we're we're not. It's not, we're not paying for it, but it's, you know, it's got to get done anyway. So I think uh, Todd said within a week or two, we should be having them. It should be uh, delivered. And then we have PEC electric uh, on board to uh, put them up uh, once we get them. And it will be, it will be a lot brighter. It, it'll be brighter because they're LEDs. And it'll be uh, more energy efficient too. So our electric, bill, well, our electric, if you, if you all got notice from Eversource, our bills are going way up, way up, but, uh, We'll have less electric use, so uh, hopefully we won't see too much of a, a huge difference in costs uh, once January hits here. Okay. When when I left last Friday night, and you know I went out that side door, the door across from yeah, it was very dark trying to make our yeah. way to the car. Yeah, it is. So hopefully yeah. this will take care of that. Okay, because that was that was a problem. Okay. Any other questions about Todd's report? I, no. I have a question. So Excellent. it references the Monocotuck room and the audio upgrade. Is that something for hybrid or what is that? It, it is. That was something that um, the IT department and Matt wanted to do there in the Monocotuck right. room. So yeah, it's a hybrid. Uh, you, you can have a live meeting, a Zoom meeting from there. Um, um, some of our, our classes, if they want to do live versus Zoom or and Zoom, they can do it. Um, uh, we, we've already heard, Ellen already heard from somebody from one of the fitness classes. They're not too happy with the look of the room. Um, it was a yoga class. And I think, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the mindset they get into for yoga, it's different because there's all this high tech stuff in there now. So there were some, some concerns about that, but, um, but it, you know, it is kind of nice. There are a couple of cameras and they can zoom in, they can move cameras around into wherever the speaker is. And uh, I was up there when they were, um, you know, try, uh, testing it out a little bit. But uh, to answer your question, uh, Tara, yeah, it's going to be like we had our meeting right now. We could be meeting there and having Zoom, you know, people watching from home at the same time. So that was the purpose. We have one in, in town hall, has it in the selectman's office. So mm -hmm. Matt wanted to have one in the community center because we have so many meetings in that room. Right. Okay. I, I, I assume that's what it was, but I just wanted to be clear in the note. So the Minuxtug room is also now the Zoom room. The Zoom room. <laughs> That's yeah. easier to say. <laughs> are we going to get a uh, Are we going to get a nameplate for that too? For the Zoom yeah. Room? <laughs> yeah. People okay. remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ellen's report. So yes, the 12 days of giving nominations. So that's gonna start December. That's a start, oh, today. It was today, I saw it posted. Oh, yeah, we, uh, Where did you see this posted? Well, I saw the, the, the person who's being honored or the 12 days of giving, isn't it, uh, uh, on Facebook, actually just oh. before I came on here. Oh, do we know who? It was Mamie DePetris, who is a high school senior. Yeah. Nice. There were some very, very nice nominations. There were quite a few, uh, uh, I read through them all today. Um, so staff kind of, we all kind of picked the ones we thought were most deserving. And I think, I think Ellen said we were, were all mostly on the same page. We all did it independently. 
Uh, but yes, it was a high school uh, student that you know, I got the first one. Uh, very, very impressive, the things that were written about her. Mm -hmm. so, it was a great idea. Again, program staff came up with an idea and um, uh, I, you know, I should have counted, but I would, my guesses are probably, mm, I'm going to say maybe, maybe 22 or so with nominations for 12, maybe 24. Um, but, but 12 were selected. So one each day is going to be announced on, uh, uh, I guess, on Facebook and social media. Uh, but that was great. Another good idea they had. Um, and she mentioned Zoom room on there, training for the Zoom room in the Nucketuck room. So uh, yeah. it's official Zoom room. <laughs> uh, the other thing I want to just mention, the second from the bottom bullet. Um, yeah, so when they were doing uh, kids vaccines at Guilford Lake School uh, a couple of weeks ago, the uh, health director reached out to several departments asking if any of us had any kind of giveaways. So we didn't have any like t-shirts left or, or anything. So um, Ellen and Connor and Taryn put together goodie bags with, with uh, candy in them and different things. And, um, and then they created a, a word search. Uh, and so while kids were waiting to get their vaccine, they do the work, word search. And then there's a, we got a pile of probably two or 300 of them. Um, we're, we're, I think after the last clinic, which I, might be this week, we're gonna have uh, maybe Matt and, um, Sonia come over and, and draw some, some names like randomly out of the, the papers randomly out of a box or something. And there's some prizes we're gonna give away to some of those kids. Um, but uh, Sonia said it, it was a huge hit. A lot of the kids couldn't wait to come back for their second shot <laughs> because they liked the thing, the giveaways that they got. Youth services gave some stuff, I think maybe the mm -hmm. library did, I'm not sure who else, but several departments uh, had something to give the kids. So, uh, you know, they got something to take, take away with them. And um, in our case, somebody might win a prize. So somebody will win a prize. I don't know who yet, but uh, when we do that drawing. So uh, again, another good idea was, you know, illustration of several departments working together. And Sonia was just thrilled. She said that the parents and kids were so thrilled about all the giveaways, not just ours, but what, whatever was available to them. And they were just really, really happy. So again, another, team effort and a good example of uh, several departments working together. All right, any other questions about that? All right, they have done a great job with that threesome. Taryn and uh, Ellen and Connor have been great. So we're very, well. very fortunate. They work well together. They have a lot of great ideas and they're a lot of fun. Anthony's report. Anything that we need to highlight? Any questions? Yeah, I have, I have a question, Rick. The uh, the boardwalks is that the and that's the the only boardwalk is in front of the uh, the grass, right? Well, the handicap board. Uh, right, so the handicap. Oh, okay. Well, well, there are, are two. The one removed? by the. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rick. We removed two. The one that's the roll-up one, the mat by the bathhouse. We, we take that up, and the other one where the boat racks are. The boat racks. We take are. that up oh, every year. When I when I saw a boardwalk, I'm thinking they rip up the right in corner where the grass. Oh God, is. no! Yeah, no, not that. <laughs> no. Okay, Maybe thank you. Something, uh, but yeah, it's the it's the boating ramp. You know that one okay. uh, in the handicapped accessible one. Um, right. I'll just mention about uh, edging ball fields because people might wonder well, why are we edging ball fields in the fall. Um, and, and somebody else asked that question actually uh, last week asked me that and um, um, I, I think I started probably 20 maybe 25 years ago when, when Phil was the foreman I, you know, we, we struggled to get on these fields in the spring you know what the weather can be like right it can be pouring rain and then the fields are soft they're muddy we can't get on there so um, you know back then we just started doing a lot of this edging in the fall to prepare for the spring because nobody's on the fields, we can get on them. They're not, you know, muck or, you know, soggy. Um, they still have to go back and touch things up in the spring, but they get a big head start on it by doing it in the fall. And as Tony pointed out, they did, uh, as his report, eight of the 17, about half the fields are done. So they're still working on that. The weather's good and they're doing it. And um, I know they were at Adams uh, uh, last Thursday or Friday doing them. So um, it's probably more like, 10 or 11 of them are done now. But um, anyway, that's why we do it. You know, I, I want to make sure, you, you know, because somebody else had asked that, well, why are you doing it? That's <laughs> why. <laughs> so anyway, as always, Tony and the guys are doing a great job. 
Yeah. Any other questions? And we're fully staffed. We have all, this is, in the last month, it's the first time since April, we've had, well, actually first time all this year, we've had 100% staff. Everybody, we had everybody on board. Great. So they're, uh, so we'll get things done this one. Um, Terry didn't have a report, Rose, because, no. oh, I'm sorry, questions on Tony's, I'm sorry. Um, but I, I did talk about a couple things today, just to let you know. Uh, really, just a, a upcoming events. The Rotary lunch uh, is um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Two hundred people signed up um, for this Wednesday, and uh, let's hope it doesn't snow. They're talking about maybe some light snow, uh, but that's a you know the Rotary does this every year. Just the forty-first year that they provide a, a free lunch for uh, seniors and um, the uh, Guilford Voices. They're going to come and sing. Uh, John Seville will be there doing background music. Uh, DJ. Uh, Santa Claus shows up from uh, up. one of our Rotary Club members knows him very well and gets him. Um, and um, Al Jacobs has been doing this for I think 41 years, and it's amazing what he does. The, to today he brought in all the the goodies. Oh, every senior gets a, a, a shopping bag full of of stuff uh, that that uh, Al goes to shopping at Walmart. He and Tom Terrible went there today. They brought all the boxes into the community center today. Tomorrow, the Rotarians will be in at eight to stuff all those 200 bags. So they're ready to go on uh, Wednesday when all the seniors come. And as they leave, and Rose, you know, you've been there. As, as they leave, they get a bag and and uh, and go out. But it's, uh, it's a great event. Uh, 200 people signed up. Uh, the other one is, and if anybody's available to help on... Uh, 17th. The 17th is the Parks and Rec Christmas slash holiday lunch. And we'll probably have another 180 people for that one. Um, usually what Terry likes to do is get, get uh, four teams of two, you know, to help serve people. Uh, so we need eight people basically. And I think she's got, I think we're down a couple. There's a few more we still need. And Rose, we're kind of counting. You might be there. Yeah, well, um, I'm, 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 yes, I help collect the money now on Fridays, but I yeah. will also serve on Friday. Yeah. Okay. But if anybody else is available or around, I know mostly people work, but if you're uh, around and, um, I think she was going to ask Laura because I think Bob's coming, Bob Hartman. So I said, well, why don't you see if Laura would come too? Then that, that could be a team. So but anyway, it? uh, it's, it's another great event. Uh, Terry does her uh, her singing. Christmas <laughs> songs, yes. She makes up a song every year. And uh, yeah. the vocals are, aren't the best, <laughs> but but it's, it's fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. She doesn't mind hey. embarrassing herself. <laughs> hey, hey, Rick, Rick, you said December 17th? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what... what, uh, what from what time? Uh, we usually try to serve at noon, so probably you know, like quarter of. Right. I see. So, yeah, I, I could probably be there. So, what what time you need me there? Uh, to, uh yeah. So, you can come like uh, Rosa, maybe quarter of, and quarter you know, by service quarter done of. everything, it's probably about what maybe Rose one fifteen, maybe. Yeah, probably this will run a little later. So yeah, That's probably right. around one fifteen. All right. So eleven eleven forty five to one fifteen. There yep. are, are you definite? I'll, all right, let's hear you know tomorrow. All right, thanks. Yeah, and unfortunately, she, the rest of her report, she'll catch up next month, but she, yeah. uh, she's been, she's been uh, away for a little over a week with uh, her brother. That's fine. Uh, dying. Yeah. It's good. All right. Standing fields, anything to report? Nothing to report. Everybody's just happy that the uh, that the um, stadium field at the high school uh, had its first games during the high school uh, CIAC soccer playoffs. The girls played there, opened the field, and then the boys played the following night. Um, and everybody was duly impressed as to how how beautiful the the entire complex looks right now. Okay. Uh, Green committee. Um, didn't have a meeting, but I will tell you, uh, uh, I went to the Board of Selectmen this morning. They approved, remember we talked about benches in, in, um, uh, a, a while back, and, and they approved the bench that the, the Green Committee selected. Um, there are six that will be ordered. Uh, John Cunningham was the vice chair of the Green Committee. He, he got the quotes for the benches. Uh, they're being paid out of the American Rescue Fund, so it's not, not coming out of our budget or Green Committee budget. Um, but it was approved today, and um, he and I are meeting there tomorrow to kind of really start talking about where they're going to go. 
Um, the, the plan was to have uh, lot, uh, one on each side of the sidewalk so that, you know, somebody can be on one side of the sidewalk or the other and they can face each other and, and you know, talk, have conversations. This all came about from, um, you know, last year and a half with COVID. You, you go there almost any day, you see people sitting around in a circle or across from each other, you know, bring their own chairs. And so, um, you know, the Green Committee thought about, well, what if we just add more benches and have them facing each other so they don't have to bring their own chairs? Um, but a couple of members of the Board of Selectmen they suggested that if we're doing that, though, you got people walking in front of them on the sidewalk and um, somebody suggested maybe putting them in a circle. I, I don't know that that's going to work because I don't know how we maintain that area. Um, but John, you know, John's a landscape architect. Uh, he's well respected and John Cunningham. And uh, we're going to meet out there tomorrow, and we'll, you know, with his input, we'll figure out where they're going to go. But most anyway, move today. Uh, Rick, most of the people I saw that are on the green that did their own gathering, uh, they were in the grass. They were not on the sidewalk, and they would put their chairs in a circle, and they would uh, they would have their talks and their discussions and their their uh, beverages and cheese. But I, I, you know, having them across from each other, I think it's true. You know, you're you're going to have people walking through the middle of conversations. I'm not. That's <laughs> that just seems um, you know uh, doesn't seem right for that to for that to be set up that way. Okay, well, and we'll see what John, you know, again, John, John's the group, yeah, really a great space function. We um, don't really have much to do with that other than. Yeah. The, no, I'm just. You being on the committee, so. No, we can do. Yeah. Um, okay, Laura's not here. Splash pad, anything, uh, Claire, that we need to know, or is we're just still waiting for bids? Um, right now, it sounds like we are waiting for bids. Um, we're getting down to the wire though, because yeah. we really do need to order um, this ASAP so that we have it in time to do it. Because as we know with everything, shipping is a nightmare. So, and getting parts. So we wanna make sure we have everything. Um, Rick, did you talk more with that other company from that Matt suggested? I, I called four references that they gave me uh, on Friday. Nobody was there. And now one of them called me back. So I'm not gonna chase them. I don't think I need to. Uh, I left a message, told them why I was calling. Um, but um, I haven't heard back from anybody. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, Claire, tomorrow, uh, Tom Tabella, who's our, the architect for the project, he's meeting with another contractor who's local from uh, Brantford. Uh, they're meeting there tomorrow to, which I'm a little surprised. None of the other people who offered a price even went to look at the site. So I don't know how they can really quote on something we don't really know what they what it looks like there so um he's meeting with one of them tomorrow morning at 8 30 which I, I can't go because i got a meeting at eight another one at nine so I, I can't be there but um and tom knows but he, he'll he'll handle it so hopefully it's a local company and hopefully they'll they'll give a, a good price ears crossed yeah what happened with the design review committee's changes nothing it, they, they approved it before. You can't just suddenly unapprove something that you have previously approved. No, I found that astonishing. Yeah. No, we, we, uh, we talked about that with, um, with Matt and uh, with Matt and, and Pete Barrett. And uh, they said, planning zoning has already approved this. You can't, can't now just change it last minute. So um, it, it would create some problems. Just so everybody knows, design review committee, um, about three days before we, we originally planned to go to Board of Selectmen for approval, uh, wanted to uh, talk about it again and make some changes. Um, it, really, the biggest change was they wanted to move it toward the playground more, get it more off the beach. And I talked with our designer about that. Part of the problem with that is it's a, there'd be more grading, and that would change the plan that he already created for grading. Um, and it, we'd have to... Uh, uh, do something with irrigation. We'd be tying, cutting into the irrigation line there. So that had to be t dug up and it, it, changed, it would have changed the specs. And uh, it was um, literally, it was Wednesday. We were, we were hoping to get approval the following Monday from the Board of Selectmen. As it turned out, we didn't go to the Board of Selectmen because the price that came in was way, 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 way high. <laughs> and there's no way we were gonna approach them for that. But um, anyway, speaking with the architect, he. Uh, 
you know, it was enough change that he have to change the specifications and the design and we'd have to pay him more to do all that. And, um, you know, we were told um, uh, by people beyond me that we don't have to make any changes. It's been approved. They approved it unanimously. Board yeah. of Selectmen, I mean, Board of Fine, uh, board, I'm sorry, Planning and Zoning approved it. Yeah, after it's been approved, you just can't turn around and say, well, we changed our mind, so. Yeah. Okay, unfinished business, box lacrosse. Anything uh, happening Not really there? new, but I, I did meet with um, a representative from uh, youth lacrosse there uh, about two weeks ago, Kevin mm -hmm. McGee, you know, who oversaw the uh, Chestnut Orchard project there and two people from the volunteers from the Chestnut group. And um, it, it's in their hands right now, the, the youth lacrosse, they, they know that it's been approved by our commission. Um, there's no problem with the chestnut trees because they're far enough away from that. Uh, and they know that the next step is they have to get a soil scientist to uh, mark the wetlands area and then get a survey done at the property. They understand that that's their responsibility. I mean, I'll be happy to help them connect with people, but you know, we've told them that they're gonna have to pay for that, right? Um, and uh, once that's done, then they you know, go forward to wetlands commission and planning and zoning, but they have a little work to do before that. Oh, I did. Again, when we're doing brush cutting, uh, there's there's some weeds on there, probably four feet tall. So I asked Tony with our, our brush mower, can we just get down there at some point? It'll probably take a guy a couple hours, just mow down those tall weeds because you can't see across. You don't really, it, it blocks the view of what the open area is down there. So um, uh, we'll do that. I mean, it is it is park property, you know, so we'll, we'll go down there and we'll, we'll knock that down at some point. Rick, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a fence that surrounds that chestnut um, arbor. Does that have to be uh, removed as well? I think so. And that, that would be their responsibility. Yeah. They put it up. When I say they, the, the chestnut orchard people, they, they put it up. Okay. It's kind yeah, of dilapidated. It, it's in disrepair right now. So yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't, doesn't do any, um, no. doesn't do anything other than look bad. Right. Okay, capital budget was presented to the selectmen. And I suppose what we just have to wait to hear, right? Or yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of the big projects uh, they've, uh, they've approved out of the American Rescue Fund. So I think they're going to happen. Some of them aren't happen. next year. Some are two or three years down the road. But um, we just got to wait and hear back. You know, obviously, they got to look at all the budgets that were presented. And... Um, We'll, you know, we'll see what we get. Okay. 50 driveway. Um, nothing really new on that. Um, you know, we, we were originally pushing to try to get out of the trailer, the office trailer to get, get in there. Um, well, uh, the lease for the office trailer goes until like a year from now, next December, December 31st. So we're pretty much locked in. I know uh, the town attorney is looking into that to see if we can maybe get out of that. Um, but so when we're doing our budget for next year, at this point, we're going to assume we're going to be uh, in there for, well, that we may, may not be in there, but we have to pay for that trailer up through December. But it'll be half a year, not a full year. Um, and there are some savings. We want to pay for the pumping of the toilet facility and all that. So uh, we might save a few thousand dollars with that. Okay. The cost of the senior meals, we have this from last month, but we did talk to the selectmen about that and we haven't heard anything back. So we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Yeah. I guess right now, right. hopefully they'll be able to cover the- uh, You know, I, this goes back to the bills, but Rick, have you seen a, um, an increase in the cost of uh, the acquisition cost of food? Um, yes. Yes, that, yeah. That's- Rose, I want to say my wife's calling me, I'll be right back, sorry. Yeah. That's part of the problem, uh, not the problem, but but the cost of the, the food has definitely gone up. So that's why we're seeing this huge deficit. Okay. All right. So, but we, we did talk to we did talk to to uh, to Matt about it. We had him come and um, you know we're we we're a little hesitant to to raise the price if we don't have to. So we're going to wait to see what what uh, the town. Well, um, just second. refresh my memory a little bit. What is the actual uh, price uh, for uh, breakfast and, and during, for lunch? 
no, but breakfast you pay for. That's that's yeah. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't really count it into this. And actually, the the breakfast used to used to before COVID um, have a surplus that helped offset the cost of the lunches. Right. But mm -hmm. that's changed. You know, with COVID, it's slow coming back to normal. Um, during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday's meals are three fifty. Friday's meals are four fifty. You know, one of the things, you know, as a formative marketing person, maybe the good thing, maybe the thing to do is, that as, is just do a quick survey of people as they walk in uh, for their lunches and just say specifically, due to the cost, increased cost of food, would you be willing to pay a nominal increase in the amount of your um, meal? Yeah, um, I and, can do that. And I do, absolutely. I, that, that, that to me would give a better idea as to whether or not there, there would be any uh, pushback on any increase rather than just springing it on people and saying that, hey, we're now going to $5 or whatever, is that right. would you be willing to pay for a right. $5 meal due to the cost of food? And I, I think you should take a survey of the folks as they come in just to um, get their um, reaction to it. I'll suggest that to Terry. Yeah, but remember, remember, Rose. Also, when we had that meeting with Matt, that there was wasn't a big appetite. Excuse the pun. <laughs> big appetite for raising the fees for the seniors. No, there's not. But you but know, you know, we, we can force forces of funding possibly. Right. And and we also have to look at the cost of Meals on Wheels as well too. Right. So, there's a lot that goes to that. But I will I will suggest that to Terry. Okay. Um. All right. Well, the tables are ordered. Yep. So we're good with that. All right, new business. The the ah, ah our operating budget. So we do have to somehow meet to discuss our operating budget. So I, the first question is: Do you want to meet? Try and meet in person with our masks on, or do you want to still do try to do it over Zoom? I would prefer Zoom. Just gives me a little bit more flexibility with my work schedule. Okay, everybody else here, what's up? I'm easy, either way. I, I kind of like the Zoom option. I'm good either way. Yeah, I, I don't have a strong opinion. Okay. Um, Rick, when will this be done? I mean, when will when will we have something that we need to work with here? When will we? Well, it's a, that's a good question. I'm I'm working on it, but I don't have. Um, we just, just got notification today from the finance office. Uh, they wanted in by the end of the month, which I knew that, so that's why I started to work on it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some things like things like uh, salaries, wages, that all comes from Mitch. Uh, in utilities, I, you know, I don't know what they're gonna, uh, what the contract is for electrical, gas, gasoline, um, uh, oil, we have to pay for oil at 50 driveway now, we gotta add that to the budget. Uh, all right, water, so, uh, yeah, they, all right. The rates are going to be yeah, yeah so I hate, I hate to say this but i i really do think we're we're operating in the dark here because um looking forward there doesn't seem to be any uh slowdown on the prices increases on on the staples that we need in order to run our operation oh right it's just gonna it's just gonna keep getting more and more and you know i i don't think we can live back in the days of having a one or two percent increase it's going to get nominally bigger than that oh i think i think you're right I think definitely, but um, we do have to come up with what we think. With numbers. With numbers. Yes. Yeah, John, um, John, to your so, point, Tony said the grass seed that we get now, uh, you know, we the, the, the quality of the fields has improved for a lot of reasons. One of them is we went to a different kind of seed. That, that's one of the many things. And the way Tony does it is, you know, is certainly adds to that. But the current seed we get is uh, about two bucks per pound. That same seed is going up to four dollars a pound. So think yeah. about that. Our grass seed budget is seventeen thousand dollars. We go with that same seed. That's thirty-four thousand dollars next year, and that's just one thing. Not counting field marking, paint, fertilizer, everything else. It's it's going to be a kind of a nutty year. You know, we well, hope all. You time. know, we're going to have to submit it, Rick. I mean, that's the only thing we can do. We have to pay for it. Yeah. So we have to submit it. And we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm sure the other departments are all having the same right same problem. So yeah. yeah. You know, I. I yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, although today's, we're going to have to meet next week. 
I mean, unless people want to meet Christmas week. Mm, like Monday, the maybe Monday the twentieth. Monday the twentieth. Mm. No, that would be not the twentieth. That would be the yeah. that would be the thirteenth. Well, next year. Well, right? Rick's saying yeah. he doesn't even know if it'll be done by then. So we're saying maybe the twentieth. Does that 20th work? Is I mean, it's awfully close to Christmas, but does it work for for? Um, yes, it works for me. Shall we plan on that? I'll have to do the same thing as tonight, depending on what time we start. I have seven o'clock basketball, but right. that's I could still listen. We could use the Zoom room if people want to be in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And we don't record that meeting either, so. Right. Um, so I well, think what, do we have to give notification for um, public meeting? I think we do. Do we, Kathy? Do we have to give notification for a budget meeting? Mm -mm. I don't think so. No, we've we've always had a private, like I just said, conversation. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to establish it as executive yeah. session. Yeah, because no one else is allowed to have comments on it. So I, I don't think we yeah. ever had to publicize that we were having. Well, so be it. Let's, let's just schedule it as an executive session for the budget and then that'll cover our basis. All right, so I, don't, don't, I don't believe you can do that. There's only four things you can go into executive session for and that's not one of them. That's not one of them. Budget is not. But in the past, I mean, I remember sitting just us in our just us, yes, yeah. we, a room yeah. at the community center going over the budget. Oh, well, Kathy's are taking minutes. Yeah, if if you have a quorum, I think you have to publicize it under the freedom of information. Way back in the past, we would call it a workshop and say we didn't need to do anything. And the freedom of information guy said, no, no, you get your hands smacked if you play that game. If you're having a meeting, you have to do all the right legal things. So you post so an agenda. agenda. So have so meeting. We, we post it, we have it, but I don't think yeah. we have to record it is what I'm saying. Well, if you have a quorum, you need minutes. But aren't you going to take minutes? Yeah. 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 No, I mean, you don't need to record it on Zoom if you don't want to. That's what I'm saying. We don't have to. Record. Yeah. Yeah. So it would yeah. be, yeah. All right. So Monday, the 20th at 630. Is this, I haven't checked my calendar, but hopefully that'll work. All right. The last thing on our agenda now is the, um, letter that we've got requesting um, an event they want to have on the 11th. Wow, which is pretty soon. And um, they're going to want to serve wine and cheese. And the town ordinance says that there is no alcoholic beverages in town buildings, unless I'm incorrect, right, Rick? Unless approved by the authorizing Commission, which be you folks and the Board of Selectmen. We would have to approve it and the Board of Selectmen would have to approve it. And it's this Saturday. So I don't know how they're going to, even if you approve it, I don't know how, you I, know, let's board. I say it's a slippery slope. I really do. We, we approve one and then the floodgates open. I, uh, we, I tend to we agree. Got, We've never allowed it before in the community center. And I've been on this commission more years than I should. Yeah, have. I want to say that all the times that this has brought up, been brought up in the last seven years, we have said no. Um, and also with it being this Saturday, I mean, they'd need to have liquor insurance and everything. And don't we, if even if we approved it, wouldn't we still have to go to the board of selectmen too? They, they would. would. So, yeah. so that's not giving them enough time to discuss it with both boards, approve it and get their liquor insurance. I know you just buy it online, but still so we would need proof of it. My question is, what group is what group is requesting it, and where are they requesting to have it? Oh, this is uh, the uh, um, the Starship uh, Theater. Mm. It's it's a dance group. Okay, they, and, and where they put on a magic toy shop? They, uh, it used to be at the community center. It's at Andrews uh, Theater in, in uh, Clinton. They, yeah. Okay, so and there and where what town property? Community center. The community, community center. center. Okay. 
So they're, they're having the production in Clinton, but they're having a party at the community center. Is that, my, is that right? Yeah, they're Guilford based. Uh, we, we actually used to co-sponsor them for years. Yeah. And they used to do it the night in the tree lighting. That was our contribution to the tree lighting, the magic toy shop at the community yeah. center. They do rehearse there now. Every Sunday that they're rehearsing, they pay for that. It's a rental. Um, and they're, you know, they'll be there until, I, I think their show is around December 17th, maybe somewhere there. Um, so, uh, but they were looking for to do this as a fundraiser. I think it's a little too close and we've said no in the past. So that's just my opinion. Okay. Do we need to put this in the form of a motion? Do you think? Yeah. Might be better just to cover ourselves. Okay. Would you do that, Claire? Sure. Um, I make a motion for the Starship um, Theater group to have a wine and cheese event December 11th. To allow or to, how to word this to, to, to yeah to, that's to, why I was like well I, I, I nicely no, no, I mean how do you say this nicely really and, and um, I would say to deny rather than uh, to allow yeah all right to deny well, the, the, the yeah isn't it the simple question of we don't want to say we don't want to put a motion that, that right we deny it. we're just going to put a motion do we do, do we we um are we going to allow uh, alcohol at the wine and cheese event that's that should be the motion right yeah because oh. i mean we have to vote yes. motion, absolutely yeah, yeah. Okay. so so the motion would be that we not allow um the serving of wine uh, how about how about this motion i make a motion to vote on whether we allow wine at the wine and cheese event <laughs> at the uh, park and rec building by Star, uh, Starship Theater will take a vote on whether we allow it or not allow it. I don't know. Because by That's saying an awkward by one, saying, it's like this is awkward. Motion, if we take a motion to deny it. That's like we've already made our decision before we even vote it. You right. I mean, it doesn't sound right. Just make a let's make a motion. Do we allow alcohol, wine, at this event? All in favor? And, and I don't know. Or do we just say, do, you know, does um, I make a motion for the Park and Rec Commission to continue to deny alcohol use on the community center property? Or rather than have to not allow, does that sound a not, like? <laughs> to, to not, not allow, allow alcohol, use alcohol use on, on property. Yeah. On the community property. Yeah. That would include the recent request of Starship right. Theater. That makes more sense. Okay. Okay, somebody second the motion now. I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any more discussion on this? Well, we have to vote. Everyone right, has to. Any more discussion uh, before okay. we vote? I'm like, don't move on. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 I'm not moving on to anything. I just want to make sure no, if anybody has anything more to say about this issue. I think it's a All good right. idea to not allow it. I, I think I, just get to that building. Yeah, I, I mean, I think she's right. You know, we don't want to start a slippery slope here. So, yeah, and I bad, think it would. Bad, I, bad I, idea to have alcohol on a town building. Really bad idea. Yeah, Tara? Oh, no, I'm just in agreement that we can't open this door to that because I think it will, oh, you know this will be the first of many requests and I think we need to continue as as we've been going along. Yeah, we just denied a wedding last year it, it, to have it, wine. Right. So I, I mean, I feel like you, you, if you're going to say no to a wedding, what's yeah. different about this event? Like what makes them special? So I feel like we if we if this is the avenue that we've gone down for the past 10 years, then I think we need to continue it. I agree. Okay, all in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Okay, looks like we're all in agreement. Okay, any other business? Well, I just have a question, Rose and, and Rick. I had submitted some uh, topics for discussion a month ago. Um, I, I would like to resubmit them again. I don't know if we wanted to. I, I'm willing to, to pass on them now, but I would like to add them to the agenda for the January meeting. Remind me. What they were health of the mill pond 
the construction of a possible kayak rack at Lake uh, Quantipog and uh, a Boy Scout project to build uh, a bridge at uh, Baldwin Bittner Park um, on the Purple Trail that's behind the um, um, Board of Education trailer at the Baldwin parking lot. Right, I think we're, we're, the, the, didn't we try to, to put something at, at um, up at, up at Quantipog and there's just no room. And plus it was a scenic road and there's all kinds of problems. Yeah, right? like I, I think we talked about that, a boat rack. Yeah, I think uh, it's vaguely familiar though, a while back and it might've been because of the scenic road. Well, I know what it was. The crew building, the crew, I shouldn't say building where the crew boats are. That was, there was a lot of issue and controversy about that. And they had to be kind of tucked into the woods there. That's why you can't really see it if you're coming from the north going south, it's not that visible, especially when the leaves are on the trees. Um, I, you know, anyway, I guess, um, I don't know who, who oversees the historic nature or scenic roads, if there's a town committee on that, but um, I, I remember there, there were some hurdles to go through to get that that um, crew facility there, that that um, rack. Yeah, they said, uh, there's, they said there was no room there. Well, not there, but I think, John, you're talking about a grass area, right? I'm talking about the grassy area that's yeah. uh, uh, where, where the crew actually parks their uh, trailer right now um, to set up some racks there because I, I don't know, people seem to be more, I'm more than willing to do to, at, at my age to do kayaking on a lake than rather on Long Island Sound. But there's also the boat ramp where you could just go, go in. But I'm just saying, you know, putting up a kayak rack like we have, a uh, boat rack like we have down at Jacob's Beach. Yeah, I, I, I recall that we, we couldn't do that once before. So what, can you look into that, Rick? And see what yeah, I will. I'm pretty sure we saw that. John, were you talking about on the grassy area by the water or by the parking lot? Grassy area in the parking lot. Okay, well, how do you get people to go across the, the road there with their kayaks, though, when they want to go in? They have, we have the traffic light there. Yeah. Okay, but, but wouldn't that limit parking or, I mean, where, where, which grassy yeah. area? Right grass? well, well, it'll be the grassy area that's the that's closest to the road where they parked their, uh, their crew skull trailer right now. Okay, because, you know, I think we want to be care careful not to limit any parking space there. And if we're attracting people to kayak now, we already have full parking lots when people go swimming. I don't know how that's going to work out. Although we know Jacobs Beach too, there's, there's limited parking there and all the activity that's going on there. You know, we, we, we didn't do it this year or last year because of COVID, but we will have kayaks available for people again when the beach is open. Uh, you know, we just didn't do it because of COVID the last two years, but last year, next year, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to start doing it again. Um, we talked about getting rid of the paddle, bo the pedal boats. Because those are so hard to maneuver. They're very yeah, they are. People don't so much, and it's a workout. I mean, really, you go very well, far with them, you're, you're exhausted. So we talked like about like a bathtub out there. They're not very. They're, they're not much fun. No. Not. you're right. I, right. I, I don't think I I think kids like them. Mm -hmm. They're right? they're an attraction because when I tell people that's what we do in the summer, they're like jazzed about it. Oh, I didn't even know they had those. That's so great. Mm -hmm. I mean, people definitely are enjoying the kayaks when you have them out, but mm -hmm. th there's something about the paddle boats. My kids love them, even though I do all the work. I was gonna say yeah, kids love just... them and parents <laughs> do all the work, but uh, they're, they're good for the first fifty feet, and after that, it's 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 yeah. tedious. It's a it's a job. It really, is. it's good workout. <laughs> but I can look into that. Okay. And what was the third one, John? Oh, a bridge at... Um... On the Purple Trail behind the, um, the, uh, the portable trailer that the Board of Education has at Baldwin. Yeah. Um, if you go about 100, oh, maybe 100 feet in off the, tra uh, the trailhead, there is a, there's a small creek there that needs to be uh, forded um, or needs to be crossed. And there are only rocks there and they're very slippery and... Um, it would be a great eagle project to have somebody put a um, a, um, a bridge over that creek, and also it'd be so easy because you can get the materials directly from the parking lot with very minimal amount of effort. You don't have to it, schlep stuff all the way into, deeply into the woods. And which color trail is that one? Purple. Purple trail. Will that will that change when they 
sort of reconfigure, are they going to reconfigure the trails and everything in there, Rick, when those houses are built? Well, I don't think that one where John's talking about. I, okay. that's pretty, they, um, they are going to add more trails going north. Right. Along the river. Um, uh, Bill Johnson is back on board doing a lot of that stuff. I can talk to him about this, too. He's, uh, he's kind of a steward of a lot of those trails back there. Um, if you remember years ago, he had a group called Friends of, Friends of Bittner Trails. Right. And they have volunteers that went in there and did a lot of the work. And they, they, they kind of faded away, but he's, he's back doing a lot, some of that himself. Um, in fact, there is a, a Boy Scout who wants to do a kiosk uh, at the trailhead at Baldwin or at Bittner. Um, and um, I got an email from him a, about a month ago and I haven't heard back from him. I, I told him he's going to have to come to this commission uh, when he's ready to do that. But Bill Johnson wanted to be involved with that with him too. So um, uh, it, it's a good idea, John. I'll, I'll talk to, uh, let's look into that. Uh, that yeah. technically isn't our property, that's school property there. So not if that's our decision or more Cliff Burnham's, uh, but I, I can, I'll bring Cliff into it too and mention it to him. Well, we, we have a, um, a trail mark, a trailhead marker there that says property of Guilford Parks and Recreation. It, it's 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 not a traditional brass looking one like we have at um, the Timberlands. It's just a small white. It looks like a conservation about the size of a conservation commission uh, uh, marking, but it does say Guilford Parks and Recreation on it. So I'll have to take a look at that because I, I don't I don't remember putting that up there or having it put up. Um, it, it's been there a while. It, it's kind yeah. of weathered, but. Um, but the, the trailhead is to the left of the of that uh, trailer, and then mm -hmm. you walk in, and then it's within a hundred feet. There's a creek right there, and um, there's no way to cross it unless you get your feet wet. Right back there. Yeah, I, I think it's I know what you're talking. About. You can certainly put it on the list when a Boy Scout's looking for a project. Right. Okay. Okay. Do we have a schedule for January or for for 2022? Of meetings? Yes. Not yet. No, not yet? Not yet. Okay. But it's still the first Monday of the month. I say it's only the 6th of December and they don't have to be filed until the 31st. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to know what the uh, what the um, protocol was. Well, the next one would be January 3rd, I guess, right? Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and lastly, Rick, do we have, uh, have you been working on the uh, schedule for um, the summer concerts? I start that in January and February. Okay. Uh, we got ideas, um, but I, uh, yeah, usually that's when I start getting those planned. I reserve the dates for the green, and then I, uh, uh, we start looking at different bands. Do you have somebody in mind? No, nobody uh, uh, definitively in mind. But uh, what 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 we had this past summer was extraordinary. So uh, it was everybody. Everybody's commented on that. Yes. Everybody had a grand time. Everybody I know, uh, just they, it was just marvelous. The weather cooperated, um, and it, it, it was everything was good. There was and so, every band was great. Every band, band. <laughs> yeah, it was a good. Oh, year. It, was. it was a great. It was a great summer. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have people from. I have friends who live in towns next door in, in Madison uh -huh. and Brantford, and they come to our concerts. They don't go yes. to their concerts. They 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 enjoy our atmosphere better than they join their hometown atmosphere yes and Madison doesn't have a bad place to uh, for their concerts There's the one bad thing about that is you got route one right there and you get the, some um, very loud traffic and disrupt the um, the music they also liked our our choice of bands better yes yeah they had some no name that, bands that's what our friends told us they, they've been coming down yeah the, they, they had some no-name bands over in Brent, in uh, Madison that was sort of like, you know, I can listen to this on the radio. <laughs> it, was, it was good. We did, we did good. But yeah, keep up the good work on that, Rick, because it, it, it was just a very nice distraction during the summertime. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was. Good groups. Yeah, good groups. Good groups. Yeah, good That's year. it. I have nothing right. else. Anything else for the good of the order here? January 3rd. January Merry 3rd. Christmas, y'all. So everybody have a very nice holiday. Well, December 20th. December 20th? Oh, yeah, we'll see everybody on December 20th. That's true. Okay. Yes. All right. We'll get a notice. If, if we met in person, we could have wine and cheese. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't tell Joyce Delora. Oh, so we're coming to your house there, uh, Rose? Sure, you can come to my house. I don't care. No, you can that, wine, we'll have the wine and cheese. Bring the cheese. <laughs> Clark's for me. Kathy can walk over. No, we're good. Yeah. I was say, that sounds like an invitation to me. Okay. Thank all right, you all. All right. See you all later. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Any recording? <laughs>